Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Creel, brand ambassador of Pin Seeker and owner of VC Golf. And today I'm excited because we're kicking off a series about speed. So speed is a really hot topic on TV. We see it all over the social media channels. We see the tour guys just really pounding the ball out there. And again, they are getting physically fit. They are working out a lot, doing a lot of stretching, but also golf has come a long way. We have a lot of technology. I'm wearing uh, a bunch of little sensors. I got something on my arm, got it on my wrist. I've got it on my backside and I've got it on my back. So what these sen sensors do are really helping me look at the rotational values of my body. How good is my upper body, my lower body, my lead arm and my wrist? How are they all working, the sequencing of it? So we're gonna touch on kinetics and the kinematics of the golf swing. That's gonna be the study of the forces, friction, uh, rotation, things like that. And that's gonna be our body in the golf swing. So super important. So step number one, we have to assess the body. So what I recommend, I advise you, this is something that you're not gonna get with me on camera today, but I advise you to find a TPI certified coach and do your level one um, assessment. Find out where your body is physically. What are you physically capable of doing in the golf swing at this point? They're gonna tell you all the good and we're all gonna have bad. And it's okay to have bad because if you have bad, they're gonna give you a program to work on. So we're gonna be looking today at the four major parts of the kinematic sequence. We're gonna be looking at the hand, the lead arm, our torso or our, our pelvis, and then up here is our torso. So the pelvis should be number one, torso should be number two, arm number three, and hand number four. That's the firing sequence, okay? You can see my order's not. I just hit a couple of balls to make sure my sensors were good and I was calibrated. And I am not in good working order. That doesn't mean that I'm doomed. Just because you do it doesn't mean you can't play good golf, but you gotta realize that you're just not as efficient and you're leaving some yardages or consistency on the table, all right? So this is just focus practice. So what I'm gonna do is hit, and you're gonna kinda see what we've got going on. Another good swing. So pelvis started, torso's last, arm and hand. So I need to figure out how to focus on my torso. I haven't been in this system in a while. I'm kind of happy that my pelvis starts my transition. That is really good. I've never done that. I've, well, I won't say never. When I was younger, I did, but I haven't done it in probably a couple of years. So I'm glad to see that. Got to work on torso. So what I'm going to do is, now that you see how this works, a lot of cool data there. If you want to watch a more in-depth video, make sure you click the kinematic sequence video. But again, today I'm going to go over a few more things because that's what we're focusing on on this speed series, okay? All right, everybody. So I've got the kinematic sequence graph pulled up. And this thing is really cool. Um, I think it is well worth it for everybody to at least do this once. And probably I would look at it at an annual basis, if not semi-annual. And again, if you look at it more, even better, because you can just really hyper-focus on some things. So the red line is gonna be my hips. You can see the picture of the hips. Green line's torso, lead arm, left arm, glove hand, and then your hands. So the idea is, is this black line right here, you can see where it set, says top. So at the top of the swing, we should see the red line breaks zero, and you can see zero over here to your left. So at the top of the swing, and the top of the swing is defined by where the lead hand stops going back. So it stops going this way and then starts coming down. But before the hand stops, your hips, your torso, and your lead arm should already be moving towards the target with your hand being the last, okay? And then the gaps between each line, we call that stretch. And that's gonna be basically, the more you can get between them, the more stretch you get, and technically the more speed that you can get, okay? But the problem with mine is, you can see there's a big gap because the red is here, green is here, but the brown and the blue are in between. It should go red, green, blue, brown. Green is the last one, so I'm losing a lot of efficiency there. I, I've got some energy still left in the tank that I'm just not using. I don't have to do anything but just work on my sequence. So that's my lesson to me today. But what we can see, and again, kinematics, we're not just talking about the sequence of the kinematics, that's just one piece of the puzzle. We've got also the peak speeds, and you can see my speeds over here to the left. I mean, my hips are 425. I'm on the low end of the tour. I need to speed up my hips a little bit. You got my torso, 739. That's pretty crazy. 
is my torso is faster than the PGA Tour. It just fires last. It needs to fire earlier. And then my lead arm, 11.99. Look at that, I'm higher than the PGA Tour. So my left arm, my lead arm is faster. And then the brown, seven or 17.51, right in the middle. So my speed values is pretty good. I think the technique or the motions are pretty good the timing of them. So that's where I need to work on is timing. So what I'm gonna do is hop off here and I'm gonna put my sensors back on and I'm gonna hit a, sh I'm gonna hit a couple of shots and just show you how I'm gonna work on timing and the sequencing, okay? And to see if I can improve my sequencing pretty much immediately. If I can't, I just got more work to do, but we're gonna, we're gonna try it, all right? So let's do this. So I'm gonna have two little drills to really focus on this. I like to start out really slow. I like to hit really easy shots, really focus on the body movements. Um, it's not about really contact in the beginning. It's not about distance. It's really not even about accuracy. It's just about training the body on what you want it to do. And right now, I wanna see how my sequencing is. And again, I may not even fix it during this video. I Cause again, I clearly have a problem and it just doesn't fix itself overnight. So let's go ahead and go in here. So to start this sequence, I'm going to actually bring the club back, stop it. And then I wanna fill just my lower body and upper body start rotating. And again, I'm gonna to try to fill it. The technology will tell me if I actually do it and then see if I can have the, the, the lead arm and the hands follow. So let's go ahead. And that really felt like I got that, that body into it there. Let's see, pelvis is one, torso is two, arm is three, and hand is four. So you can see clearly on your screen that I was able to accomplish it, but my goodness, I only hit it 43 yards. You can see the swing in the background. It looked pretty good, but it felt actually terrible. So that just means some good news is I can do it. It's just how long is it gonna take to ingrain this. So this time I'm going to progress. So what I was doing is I was stopping and then firing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the club back and as this lead arm gets parallel to the ground, I wanna feel that's my cue to really fire my, my, my torso and my lower body. I want you to think kind of like a tennis player or throwing a ball and we're probably all most familiar with throwing a ball. So if I wind up to throw a ball, as my arm is winding backwards, I'm loading this arm, my body is already rotating and stepping into the throw, even though my arm is going back still. And what that does is creates a big stretch so you can really get some, uh, some power into that throw. That's the move I'm looking for. So as this arm gets parallel to the ground, that's gonna be my cue to start firing my body and let the arms drop in. Again, that's my thought. Technology will let us know how we do. Felt pretty good. One, two, three, four. Voila, that was awesome. Hit that one 84 yards. So again, I was able to double the yardage. Made a little bit faster of a move. But again, I have my progressions. You could see the two drills and I'll probably try to think of another one to add in there. So I can just have my baby steps all the way to the swing or the sequence that I'm trying to get. And what that's gonna do is set me up for stage number two, which is weight distribution. So once we train the body, we know our strengths and weaknesses, our limitations, the things that we can and can't fix. And then we start sequencing these movements. Then we're ready to actually, hey, let's get these uh, forces into the ground. And that's gonna be video number two. So make sure you hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. And we will see you next week with our weight distribution on our journey for more speed in the golf swing. So thank you guys for tuning in. And until next time, happy pin seeking.